Hello, and welcome to the Flix Forum podcast, where each episode we go back and we look at a Netflix original film in the order of release. Today, we have Netflix 328th film from 2020. It's the superhero kids film called We Can Be Heroes. It's directed by Robert Rodriguez and stars Yaya Gazelin, Lion Daniels, Andy Walken, Harla Finley, Lotus Blossom, Dylan Henry Lau, Andrew Diaz, Isaiah Russell Bailey, Akira Akbar, Nathan Blair, Vivian Lyra Blair, and Priyanka Chopra Jones. I'm Jesse, and I'm your host. Thanks for joining me today. As always, we will spoil this film as we go. So if you haven't seen this film and you're interested in checking it out, give us a pause and come back later on. But before we do start the show, this is this is a big event, this one. This is our last Netflix original film from 2020. <laughs> um, this has been a journey. This has been, this is huge. We... <laughs> have done 100, 125 films from 2020. The first episode that we did of a 2020 film was way back in the start, that start of September 2022. So it's taken us nearly two years to get through uh, the 2020 Netflix films. And it probably would have been even longer if we didn't do those Podmas sessions where we put out an episode every day in the lead up to Christmas through December. So this is a journey. This is this is a bit sad. We're farewelling 2020 before we uh, hit 2021 next week so let's get back to the film we start the show with the fast flicks where we do a quick little summary of what the film's all about so this one it's about a group of superhero parents who are kidnapped and it's up to their kids to save them and the world Ooh, intriguing intriguing yes this is a family film there there's nothing wrong with a family film this is a family film this is not going to be for everyone so i understand if uh, you're not too keen on this discussion but we will talk about how it ended up on netflix so this one it's it's a standalone and legacy sequel to the 2005 film The Adventures of Shark Boy and Lava Girl in 3D. This is a Robert Rodriguez film. It's like those characters from Spy Kids, etc. So the principal photography for the film, it began in August of 2019 and they shot in Texas in America. The visual effects they were provided by Peter Jackson's Weta Digital and the score was actually recorded at Synchron Stage in Vienna in uh, Austria. So a bit of a worldwide production here, a bit of a mixed bag of everything. Um, upon the release of the film, it was the most watched title on Netflix in its opening weekend. It finished third the following weekend before returning to first in its third weekend. It finished second behind Netflix's new release Outside the Wire in its fourth weekend, and it was revealed that the film had been seen in 53 million households during its first four weeks. According to Newsweek, it was the most watched film on Netflix in 2021. So uh, this was released on the 25th of December 2020 on Netflix. I only had a week of the 2020 calendar year, but apparently the most watched film on Netflix for all of 2021. Crazy. Um, In January of 2021, um, the month after release, Netflix announced that they were planning to develop a sequel. And by August of 2021, Rodriguez had confirmed that he would return in his role as director while also announcing that uh, the principal photography would take place in 2022. As of currently, uh, there's no official updates on the film, so possibly based on uh, those biggish numbers that they saw on Netflix, they're like, cool, let's jump on board, do a sequel, but I don't think it's actually quite gone ahead. Um, The translations for this film around the world, in Portuguese, it's called Little Big Heroes. In French, it's called We Are The Heroes. In Japanese, it's called Hero Kids. Norwegian, Together, We Are Great. In Korean, it's Hero From Today. In Chinese, it's Little Heroes for All. In Thai, it's Gathering the Power of Strong Children. (laughs) I like that one. Uh, In Turkish, it's called It's Our Turn to Be Heroic. And in Arabic, it's called Little Incredibles. So all plays on that idea of heroes, little kids doing what they can. The tagline for this one was, Power comes in all sizes. Yes, we get that. And that ties in quite nicely with the themes and ideas in this film. As mentioned before, this was filmed from August to October in Texas, America, released on the 25th of December, 2020, across the world. It did have one nomination at the Austin Film Critics Association for the Austin Film Award as well. What are the critics and audiences saying about this film? Uh, it's a mixed bag, absolute mixed bag, mixed bag. On Rotten Tomatoes, it sits at 74%. That's on 46 reviews, so that's fresh. That's pretty high. Audience drops off quite a bit. It sits at 42%. That's on more than 500 ratings. Letterboxd, it's sort of uh, on the low end too. 4.7 out of 10 on 17,000 ratings. And this is Letterboxd. This is the one that we usually say, you know, people who like film, they log on Letterboxd. It sits at a 1.8 out of five on nearly 35,000 ratings, and it's been logged by nearly 50,000 people. 
that's bad news. <laughs> that's a, that's a super low score on Letterboxd. Metacritic again, it's in, on that traffic light system. It sits in yellow for the critics and the audiences. The critics have it at 51 out of 100 on 10 reviews and the audience 4.5 out of 10 on 26 reviews also in that yellow section of a traffic light. So mixed, what are my thoughts? Um, <laughs> here we go, early thoughts. I think this is, it's a family friendly film that's there to entertain the kids. Like the CGI is very ordinary throughout, but the performances are solid for kids. Uh, the messages are very clear and they're probably really important messages for the youth of today. So I'm not completely hating this film. <laughs> Let's talk about the characters in this film. So there's a whole bunch of kids that we focus on who are trying to save the parents. And the protagonist is Missy. She's this girl whose dad has powers. He's the leader of the superhero parents or the heroics. But she doesn't have any powers. She's just normal. And that's the moral of the story is that through her, if you don't have powers, you can still make a difference to the world because she's a loner. She doesn't have any friends, but she's got these leadership qualities. So it's through her that one of the main messages of the film is shown. Her dad, Marcus, um, you know, he's, he's promised that he'll be there for her. Um, and he's going to retire from the superhero world. And, uh, you know, this is because his wife and her mother has passed away. Very small role in the film, really. Not in it too much, but obviously there to sort of show that, um, you know, leadership. He, he's, he amplifies leadership. You've got to lead. You've got to be there from the front. Um, I think, really, this Pedro Pascal, he's just there for us to stare into his eyes <laughs> at various stages. Uh, the other kids in this crew of kids that get together, I mean, their names pretty much give away what they do. Noodles, he's got these limbs that stretch like spaghetti. We got Wheels, who's a kid in a wheelchair, who's really good with technology. It was nice to see a diverse kid or diverse representation of a kid in a wheelchair where it wasn't about him being in the wheelchair. He was still just a normal kid. I thought that was really good. Ojo, Ojo, um, name in Spanish means I, and she can predict the future with her drawings. So that makes sense. We've got a character called Acapella who moves objects. Guess what? With her singing. Oh, wow. Uh, Slow-mo. Wow. Run slower than time. It's supposed to be like this hilarious character because he's so slow but i did, didn't even create a giggle for me a character called face maker what do you reckon he can make faces well and i guess this one this one's really easy too. rewind and fast forward can you guess what they do with time wow i'm, I'm not even going to tell you i'm going to leave that one leave that one hanging with you um the other two characters last two we've got wild card he's the the super kids leader um and he's pretty aggressive and, and against Missy joining this group because he's the leader and um, you know he can use any power but he just can't focus on how to use them properly or use them under control so that's his journey in this story and the last one's this guppy girl she's this little cute child who you sort of expect nothing from but she can shape water into anything because she is shark boy and lava girl's child um, the other two adults I'll touch on I won't talk about the superhero adults but Mrs. Granada she's the the lady in charge of looking after all the superhero kids very clear very early on that there's more to her than meets the eye she's you can tell that there's there's a side thing with her so I, I didn't really like how clear that was and the other one was grandma moreno she's the trainer of all the heroes in the world so she's trained all the parents and now she's she's helping the kids and she has some good advice and nice sort of motherly touch throughout which i like too all right the director robert rodriguez 50 directing credits so big 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 you know lots of television lots of film a few episodes of the book of boba fett on um disney plus lots of music video clips like demi lovato clips the spy kids films and then you look at the adult sort of slasher not slasher but the, the adult sort of thriller slash horror films like machete planet terror grindhouse sin city from dusk till dawn with tarantino like very distinct style that you'd recognize so a big name really all right let's talk about some scenes in this film what are some scenes i liked what didn't i like Things I liked. I think any scene where that where Grandma Moreno was on screen, I thought it was really good. Whether it was getting all the kids together and getting them to focus or, or giving Missy a pep talk or, or putting, you know, going and trying to rescue the parents or, or speak to the parents and put a boot up their bum just to sort of tell them, you know, turn it around, stop arguing. Uh, there's a scene where the Chariots of Fire theme song plays as Slow Mo tries to get to this alien ship. I just liked that that song uh, because, you know, that's a, that's a connection for adults to enjoy. And the last thing, I like Wild Card, um, where he sort of explains how he learned to trust Missy because she believed in him and now he believes in himself. So I, th I thought that was a nice message too. What are some things I didn't like? I think uh, the introduction of all the kids and their powers, it just went on and on and the, the acapella chick was lame. The CGI of most of them was really bad, especially that face maker. It just felt like too many kids being introduced, like way too many kids to, to keep track of. Um, Mrs. Granada, um, <laughs> You know, I said this before, but it just felt too obvious from the moment she entered the screen that she was a villain. Or, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to define her as a villain, but anyway, you know what I mean if you've seen the film. The training montage of all the kids working together, that just went on way too long. And and then that hero shot at the end, that was just lame. Uh, I, we didn't need that, did not need that at all. 
What's the film trying to say? Lots of stuff, lots of stuff. Obviously the idea of teamwork, working together, sticking together, learning to work together and not always following the rules or what's expected of you um, because you can't succeed if you, if you bicker or if you fight or if you have too much ego and, and you've got to be yourself too, you know, not having to have any special powers to make a difference is, is an important message for the world too. You, you can be yourself and and still change things. Um, that idea to of transfer of power from the one generation to the next, like the next generation being more prepared and more powerful than previous ones and trusting the youth of the world. Um, leadership is, is a big key thing in this film too. Being ready to take that step up and take charge and leading by example too. And, and I guess finally, like how hard it can be for parents to, to keep promises to their kids when work is so demanding of them especially for single parents um i think that was a really nice message too what did i take away from this one i think it's been such a long time since i've seen the spy kids films and this this reminded me of my youth i guess and I, because i really re really enjoyed those spy kids films when i was younger and, and just like a little side story i remember seeing one of the sequels when i think i mean i would have been in high school at the cinemas i was with a friend and then the lights just came on in the middle of the movie and stayed on for the rest of the movie. <laughs> just one of those vivid memories and experiences that you connect with film in your life. So I thought that was a good one too. All right, any questions, any ponderings, any thoughts? There's only one thing, like the heroics. You know, they, it's this big headquarters, big group of adults that work together to save the world. And then obviously the aliens, you know, I've said it's spoilers, but the aliens are interfering as well. And they decide to take Missy to the headquarters to lock her up with the kids with all the powers. We know she doesn't have any powers. The idea was that they were locking the aliens were locking them up to make sure that they couldn't you know save the world or wanted to test them but she didn't have any power so i'm interested to like why did she get picked to go there i don't know i wanted some sort of explanation for that i guess especially with that idea that she didn't have any powers um i'm ready to wrap it up i think you give the film a rating out of five for me like this this is made for kids i get it and i'm sure like kids are probably going to be fully into this there's moments that are there for adults too which is good but some of the things like the poor cgi are probably just going to frustrate a lot of older viewers but i'm still going to give this a three out of five for a family film three out of five for me solid rating we're on socials we've got instagram we've got facebook we've got x formerly known as twitter give us a follow give us a like i just want to know the question for the week is why do you reckon netflix put this out for christmas day it's definitely not a christmas film and based on when it was going to be released it's only been a couple of weeks as of april so i'm not sure why they pulled it for christmas day maybe it works with the the, the warmer months and something the family can sit together and watch on christmas day so i'm guessing three weeks but it's definitely not christmas day um anyway we're back